In this segment, we'll be discussing the cat's digestive system. For reference, at home, this is the right side of the animal. And we're going to start by discussing the liver lobes. The first one we see is the right medial liver lobe. And underneath of that lays the right lateral lobe. Right next to the right medial lobe is our gallbladder, and this is a greenish brown sac that stores bile. On the other side of the gallbladder, we have our quadrate lobe, Q U A D, quadrate. Laying next to that, we have our left medial liver lobe, and below that, the much larger left lateral lobe. And then tucked underneath is a very small lobe called the caudate lobe, C-A-U-D. So once again, we have our right medial, below that the right lateral. Next to the right medial, we have the gallbladder. And on the other side of the gallbladder, we have the quadrate lobe with a Q. Then we have our right medial liver lobe, left medial liver lobe, sorry, left lateral liver lobe, and then our caudate with a C liver lobe. Here we have the cat's intestines removed along with the stomach. And we will start by going over the various stomach parts. The long tube running into the stomach is our esophagus. The area immediately surrounding where the esophagus enters the stomach is called the cardia. The most cranial portion of the stomach is the fundus. And then we have the body. Then the antrum. And on the way out of the stomach, we have the pylorus, and more specifically, the pyloric sphincter, which is in between the stomach and the duodenum. We also have on the stomach the greater curvature, which is the larger outside portion of it, and a lesser curvature, which is the smaller inside portion. Attached to the greater and lesser curvatures is a fatty material known as omentum, and this covers the intestines while they're in the abdominal cavity. It's mainly made out of fat and just seeks to lubricate and cushion the abdominal organs. On the left side of the animal's body we'll have this tongue shaped, shaped structure and that is the spleen. The spleen does not have much blood in it, if any, so it is pretty small. Normally it would be um, a little bit bigger than this. As we leave the stomach we have our small intestine the first section is duodenum, then we will have jejunum, and lastly ileum. Attached to the stomach and the duodenum is this glandular material, and this is your pancreas, or the cat's pancreas. As we go down farther and we spread open the intestines, this material is mesentery. And people tend to confuse mesentery with omentum, so that is something I would definitely make sure that you study and understand. Mesentery supports all of the intestines and is attached to the body wall. It also supports our mesenteric veins and arteries. And there are lymph nodes in there as well. So that's all mesentery. If we continue to follow our small intestines, eventually we get to a spot 
where it looks like these two tubes do not match up. What we have is this top part, which is slightly over the small intestine, is your cecum. And from the cecum, we go into our large intestine or the colon. A cecum on a carnivore is very poorly developed. On a horse uh, and rabbit, hindgut fermenters, their cecum is very large. So again, the cecum is where it looks like the two tubes do not line up properly. This is our ileum, which is our last portion of the small intestine. It goes into the cecum here and the large colon there. The, the membrane that surrounds the abdominal cavity is called the peritoneum. And that's all we have for this segment.